This is all very exciting. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming to a session that's contending for the longest titled session at a DrupalCon ever. And I apologize for that. Uh, uh, the, the main title is, how do you know that gal knows Drupal? Sorry, I need to speak less to, into it. And, but really what it's about is, is towards was putting forward some ideas towards an open curriculum and an open certification system for the Drupal community. Now, uh, you, can in, you can actually follow, keep notes and make comments. We set up this Etherpad area, so if you go, if you go to etherpad.com forward slash Drupal cert, it's just kind of like a live, com you know, live area as, as these things go. So just go ahead and feel free to make, put questions in there, make comments, anything, anything, you, would, anything you would like. This is, this is what it looks like if you go to that. And please enter your name here so that we know, that those you know who those comments are coming from. And you don't have to do it, but you can do it just so we can later on kind of keep commenting that, that way. All right. And then later on we will have a discussion. We'll start a discussion at Drupal groups, uh, the groups at Drupal.org on the curriculum and training, training group. So uh, let me first introduce uh, ourselves. My name is Dominic Lukesh. Um, I've been with Drupal for a, for a while. I mean, this is, if you think about the sort of what you know about people in the Drupal community, well, I have a certified Rock score of four. I've been doing it since 2006. I've started a few uh, groups, um, uh, groups, uh, gr groups on groups at Drupal.org. I've done a bunch of DrupalCon sessions. I've installed you know, Drupal in many, many times in many different ways, and I run a bunch of sites. Some of them Drupal, some of them WordPress. So that's the sort of thing you might want to know about uh, about somebody in Drupal, like me. And I right now I work for Dyslexia Action. Now. Hi, and my name is Heather James, and you can find me on Twitter as Learning Drupal. I'm Heather on D.O, but on IRC, I'm nearly there because I didn't kind of, I don't have a consistent identity <laughs> online. Um, my certified to rock score is six, and I really throw off the curve because I consider myself the eternal noob. I've been using Drupal, um, I started as the cheap option, working for not-for-profits, and, and now uh, Drupal is the main part of my job. I administer to groups on Drupal.org, or groups at Drupal.org, and I've run some camp sessions. I've helped co-organize uh, local groups, and um, I have no idea how many different modules I've installed and tried. So I work for Acquia, in case that isn't obvious by the slide. Okay. So uh, can we just maybe get a quick sense of of who you are? Just I mean, not not personal, not individually, but can you just uh, if you ra raise your hand, if you're a Drupal trainer. All right. If you're, it like about just a, as a record, it looked like a majority of people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is as expected. Anybody here who works who teaches Drupal in a formal education, like schools, universities, so three or four people. Uh, anybody who has experience with certification programs? Either taken certification or provided certification. Okay. So five or six. And anybody who is here as a potential consumer of a certification program who would like to administer it or take it or uh, you know hire people based on certifications Great. yeah and I'm sure about <laughs> <laughs> so, so so there's a there's a nice kind of a Spanish wave going through here and uh, so again if you can if you want to you know introduce yourself say a little bit more about what you're interested in you can go to the etherpad and, and make some notes notes it's there nice So this is what we're going to uh, talk about. We're uh, quickly just uh, talk about some of the key terms because there's a lot of confusion in terminology. Uh, then Heather will talk about the context of the community at the as we see it at the moment. Uh, and then she will uh, quickly go through a bunch of different models of certification that other open source communities and non-open source non-communities non have, <laughs> have used. Uh, then I will uh, go through some ideas. I call it uh, mostly some... some so preliminary ideas for what an open c a certification program could look like that would kind of go nicely with the ethos of the community. And then at the end, we're hoping to have some space for discussion. Um, and we are also uh, started a buff that follows the session immediately. So if anybody will be interested, we can just go over to the buff area and, and just kind of keep on talking there if, if anybody's, anybody's interested. So there's... I've been kind of around all these discussions about curriculum, about curriculum in Drupal and certification. There's a lot of terms that gets thrown around uh, that very often uh, people sort of mean different things by. You know, there's certification, uh, curriculum, accreditation, and all of these things kind of get confused. So the way we start off with the curriculum is not 
curriculum is not a syllabus. It's not just a set of materials, as many people refer to it. It's not just a course. And uh, curriculum, in the sense that we, we mean it, defines competencies on which you build a syllabus and on which you can then build uh, some materials to run a course. So it's something that comes before all of these other things. Uh, it's kind of a foundation for the educational uh, environment. Now, curriculum also needs to account for the fact that uh, learning and knowledge is not linear. So whereas some basic knowledge can take you weeks um, to achieve or days even, then as you go along, there's simply no way to achieve knowledge in kind of a linear fashion. S as you know, if you've been around for years, the, the way the knowledge kind of expands in, an, in a kind of an exponential way. And it's very often, dif very often difficult to account for the types of knowledge people have at this stage of their careers because, because they're just, they haven't just followed the kind of a, uh, building, building blocks progression. Now, as I, me I mentioned, the curriculum as being defined by competencies uh, very often, uh, and then uh, they can, these competencies should relate to the real life of uh, that people, uh, uh, real life needs of people, and then be l if they're good competencies, then they should be linked to some particular learning materials that then can be easily, and also they should be easily assessed. So for instance, let me just give you some examples. So of a competency, so install, install Drupal 6 on a lab server, or select and install appropriate modules for Drupal 6 to enable listing of content. So those are sort of competencies that you can design some materials for, you can teach them, you can assess that somebody can do them. Whereas there's a bunch of sort of pseudo, what I call pseudo competencies that such as know how modules are used in Drupal. Well, you cannot really build an easy, you know, you cannot build particular materials, you cannot really easily assess this uh, in a way that you can say this person actually knows this, bec partly because of that sort of funnel thing as well. Now, I don't want to, I just want to acknowledge for any sort of educational philosophers in the room, there's a lot of controversy about defining curriculum through competencies, particularly through this, what, what's called behavior uh, descriptors. And I'm not actually proposing to sort of commit to a philosophy of what knowledge is and what, uh, what competencies are, but I just want to acknowledge that it could be controversial. But I just want to say competencies that are defined in a practical way uh, are very suitable tools then for building a curriculum and having discussions about and that's kind of that's kind of what uh, what I'm what I'm talking about. Now, certification is the other concept. Very often, it's people just think of it as an exam or as a course or just or some sort of an accreditation. So it's really not any of these things the way we talk about it. Uh, it is basically what uh, what you might call what we what I sort of define is as a statement by a trusted body about the level of competence of a person who uh, who carries. A certification. So that basically means it's all about trust. Somebody says about something about somebody, you trust that person uh, who, who's saying that. So th that's the key thing. Whereas if you're just going to define certification as some sort of a test, well, very often these tests or assessments are just kind of like, it kind of remind me of a voodoo doll. It's they're similar to the real world, but you have to you have to do a lot of ma you have to do sort of a put a lot of faith into some sort of a magic of the testing that it actually re defines that person. So it's more sim so actually the results on a test are kind of more similar to the doll than the person that you want to know about. And uh, so, however, and the certification doesn't have to be based on a unitary uh, assessment. It can, be based on ex it can be based on tests and exam results, but also on observed performance, completion of a course, and uh, Heather will talk about these, or portfolio, or just a membership in an organization. Okay. And so finally, accreditation is the thing that actually, it's the certification for people who certify other people. So again, it's, it's the next chain in the trust, and we'll talk more about the tr how the trust can work. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. So uh, Drupal up until now, uh, we really could think of um, people getting employment through word of mouth reference. We're really, um, we always talk about the Drupal.org profile as someone's ultimate CV, a real representation of the work that they do and as vetted by the community. However, today the Drupal demand really outstrips the available talent and clients are really unsure how to assess uh, the skills of the people they want to hire or work with. And then there's many skilled developers, uh, developers who are actually invisible because they're not participating in the community, either by chance or just by the work that they're doing. And developers themselves who are new to Drupal, they're not really sure how to start learning Drupal, and then experienced developers are really unsure of where to go next. And so we see this coming up time and again. So we could really think about this issue of certification in terms of the context of 
these different perspectives. So from the Drew new Drupalist perspective, how can I get started or what's next for me? For the community, how can we validate this person's skills and then what needs are there in the community right now? And then from a client perspective, how can I find the right person and who am I looking for? And there has been a great effort in training up until now. There's a lot of development shops. They share their development expertise and offer public and private training. They're either using their custom-made materials or they're using so, some of the great books out there as textbooks. And yet people are going into the training and there's really no way to see what those people have done and how they're accumulating their skills. And there are also, as an alternative to that, a lot of Drupal training is available online. There's plenty of free resources out there. There's um, primary sources, there's Learn by the Drop, Drupal, Drupal Dojo, there's many different aggregators out there, as well as paid resources, Drupalize Me, Build a Module, Lynda.com, and providing some really great um, chances for people to learn, just as valid as classroom training. Um, and there have been many conversations about Drupal certification right up until now, and um, at the risk of almost glossing over it, I do want to refer anyone who's watching the presentation later on who, or is here in the room and hasn't seen it before to go and watch the presentation of the panel uh, on certification in Chicago. And these are three different alternatives to certification that were shown. Just as briefly, Drupal Guilds was presented by Aaron Winborn, and it's actually um, a way of um, bringing people into a guild system and giving them credit for the work that they're, they're doing, but really a person-to-person -person system. Certified to Rock is an algorithm that uh, uses a black box method of judging someone's public contributions and giving them a score. And Lullabot themselves also offer a certificate of attendance, and Jeff spoke about that as well. Jeff uh, Robbins, yes. So, um, and in that, uh, Greg Nadison really gave a very good history of the certifications that were available up until now. And I won't repeat everything he has to say here, but um, there are, there have been efforts towards Drupal certification. And we're sort of, uh, you know, I think we're sort of like trying to continue that conversation. So um, one thing that hasn't been yet done yet is to really look at a comparison of models that are out there and think about um, how we can learn from other uh, certification programs. Um, in terms of the training and the actual, um, and the actual assessment method, excuse me, the, the delivery of the assessment, there's a lot of different methods. There's paper, you know, we think of like a paper-based exam. It's consistent, there's a perception of objectivity. Um, it can be easily translated, easily maintained and updated. Uh, Performance-based assessment is also seen as very rigorous, but also very costly. And portfolio-based assessment is comprehensive, but then there's a, a perception of subjectivity. Um, all of the models we'll look at have some way that they're validated. We talked about trust metrics briefly. This is the IT Certification Council, for example. They actually um, help to validate the work of organizations that certify over a thousand individuals a year or something like that. Um, and there's things like the cre uh, Credential Clearinghouse, and there are these bodies that oversee. Um, and the H certification, or um, each certification me method we're looking at, always provides some type of evidence. So um, either they have some type of, the organization has like some type of accreditation, the learner takes an exam, and there's some type of uh, provider who's actually delivering the certification, and there's some type of issuer who then verifies the certification. In fact, say if you took a Cisco certification, you would be able to go check Cisco certificates.com, go to verify, put in your ID number, and your certification would then be validated to your potential employer, for example. And each of the models we're looking at, we could sort of picture it on this scale. Uh, we've got here at the top skills, and down to rep, that means reputation. And over on the right, some uh, systems are tighter, and on the left, some systems are looser. And we kind of can plot these on a chart later on. We can also um, see that some certifications <laughs> where the early uh, levels of entry, for example, in Cisco certification could be a lot easier and lower barrier to entry and much um, easier to start with where they could get uh, more complex and more difficult later on. And we can see how we can apply that to our, si our situation. And you may have other model models as you're listening. Please go to ietherpad.com, Drupal cert, and look at some of the, look at the topic models and see if you'd like to add some. So we've heard a little bit about some of these um, certifications that are available in the Linux community, like the Linux Professional Institute, the Red Hat certification, and Ubuntu themselves have started a certification. And um, they are sort of very similar to some of the commercial type certification being uh, exam-based. Um, what I'd like to say about these here, it's interesting that uh, you know 
these are seen as valued, uh, valued by employers. We have to wonder as well why they're valued by employers. Uh, Cisco gives discounts to people who take their certification um, to, their, to their partners and more uh, certified employees you have, the greater discounts that you, you can actually avail of. And Adobe and Microsoft have similar types of programs. So while um, employers probably val uh, value them because they do give or you know, a rigorous, you know, reputa reputable um, check of someone's skills, they're also valued for other reasons. So probably better for us to look at uh, some open source models. And there are a variety of different ones we can talk about. I'd like to look at detail uh, for a moment at Typo3. Typo3 is another very popular open source CMS. It's very popular in mainland Europe. And it is another um, similar type of community. They see certification as very important for the same reasons we do. They have a type of, um, this is sort of like the, the slide you don't want to have. <laughs> What's important to take away from here is the Typo3 integrator is sort of a correlate, correlates to our site builder. And um, this person, you know, doesn't install type of three. They simply know how to configure it when it's pre-installed, and it's valid for every major version, and it does not expire. And the questions, there's actually guidelines for question writing, and questions are submitted by people in the community. And the paper-based, actually, they're delivered through a paper-based examination, and they're associated with all of their different types of community events, and it's 200 euro. Um, there are some great, obviously events within their community, and yet they don't have coverage everywhere. There's none in the UK, US, or Canada. Zend is another model. It's uh, similar to a lot of the commercial type of certification, and it's um, large scale, and it's tied very closely to their course preparation. And Umbreco is even more closely tied with their course materials to the point where you simply take the two-day course at 775 pounds, and you receive your certification after completion of the course. It's a little bit of like the uh, Lullabot model of um, certificate of completion. Red Hat, on the other hand, if we think about that scale again, or that, that graph, um, Red Hat has, for example, in the higher end, the performance-based exams. So these are similar to where someone's performing some type of task on the job, and uh, it gets verified. And almost on the other end of that scale, we'll plot these in a second, we have the WordPress User Association. This actually is a paid community of different levels, basic, premium, sponsor. And you simply have to pay to join the community, and voila, you get access to their videos. You get an official WPUA seal for your website. And you get, right here, you gain community certification levels of pro and expert. I was so confused about this. In fact, of course, I contacted them and asked them what that meant. They actually really literally mean you have to pay and you get the certification. And it's actually quite simple. I'm like, my throat's sticking together. Oh, what a great co-presenter. Uh, you're king my kingdom for water. Anyway, that's going to get recorded. Great. Right. So um, WordPress just came out. I don't know if anyone noticed. CodePoet just came out. Um, CodePoet is a, it's actually now so far from something we're talking about certification, but it actually answers that question for the clients. Where can I find somebody? How can I find somebody that I can, you know, who can do the, the things I need, the services I need? It's quite small here. Well, we have, for example, performance and scaling, security, theme development. In order to get listed on here, one thing, first, number one, is spell WordPress, right? Does anyone know how to do that? You have to make sure the capital P is in the middle there, and it's one word. Another thing is you have to link to your website where you actually list your WordPress services. And yet, you know, they're simply, they are, it's checked by a human, and it's really a reputation-based system. So let's see now, we've seen a couple different models. Maybe you're sharing some now. We've got Red Hat up here, which really talks about skills and a much tighter type of system. Whereas on the other side of that, we have Typo3, which talks about skills, but it's, it's much looser. CodePoet then would be something that's really focused on reputation rather than skills, but it's much looser. Whereas Certified to Rock focuses on reputation, but we really have literally no control over it. So how bad are we? Okay, <laughs> I saved this model for the last because I find that um, I find that this is a very inspiring model. It's called the Mozilla Open Badge Infrastructure, so we're going to nickname it OB. Um, it, it's quite different from any of the other systems that we've looked at, and I think it's really relevant to our open source project. And this is a sort of a, a schematic that they've drawn. Up here at the top, we can see some badge issuers. We have an after-school program, online learning, or a culinary institute. So you can see what they're trying to say. 
is that there are many different ways you can, you can gain learning. We're really moving to a life of online learning now, or sorry, life of lifelong learning now, <laughs> sorry. And each one of these issuers creates a type of badge or it's a verifiable uh, quantity, it's a quantifiable um, value of your abilities. And the learner can then apply for these badges, these are then submitted to this learner, and the learner then uh, can share them in their badge backpack, which they also have control over what displays. I'm just gonna scroll down the image here. From then the badge backpack, this information can be shared through your website, through various social media profiles, and any type of resume or employment sites. And the end result then, of course, is jobs, other educational opportunities, and unlocking new privileges. It's always good to keep on thinking of the end goal for people for improving themselves. I'm gonna leave this. This is a bit about their open badge system infrastructure, if you wanna talk about that later. But there are other systems out there that are working. Um, there is the ORCID Open Researcher Contributor ID, which simply solves the problem of trying to keep track of one's, uh, one writer's or one author's um, contributions. And um, it's similar to that certification I mentioned about Cisco, where you have some type of verifiable um, certification system. They tested it internally. These are some badges, for example. You know, Fellow of the Arts participated in 25 design challenges. They also tested it with real people on P2PU, which is an open, it's an open um, peer to peer um, kind of, a, it's kind of like study groups online. So um, one of these uh, badges they have, for example, is an open source contributor badge. And so here, someone can have a simple badge where someone just has to actually to assess, assess this uh, challenge someone else, a peer, has to vote yes, one vote, and then yes, you can receive this badge. And so it's a very simple example. And you're probably wondering, well, who's gonna actually write all of those little tasks? Who's actually doing that? It could be, for example, a community organization, it could be a commercial training provider, it could be peers that are creating and issuing badges. We have a good example of this in the Views Bug Squad. The um, solution to a very unwieldy large queue is to make it easier for people who could help triage the, vis the views issue queue. And over here we see the triage tasks, which would be great novice tasks. And then over on the left we have some uh, developer tasks, sort of a schematic of how they're organizing their group. And that's just happening in one place in Drupal.org, but there's also a site called OpenHatch, which is about getting all types of people involved from um, into all different types of open source com communities. <coughs> My throat's sticking together again. Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, they have training missions. These were put together by a fellow who was doing a Google Summer of Code project. We've got using diff and patch, uh, using subversion, using Git, using tar. Um, you know, we're training people how to do this in, dr in our Drupal community. They're doing it on open hatch. You know, what if we put people through this system here and, um, you know, saved basically didn't reinvent the wheel. We've even added some Drupal tasks. There's, um, for example, we have any open issue queues marked novice. You could have more granular tasks as well. This was started by, I just think this is a, a kind of a little bit of a tangent, but it's worth mentioning that Ashish Laroya, he actually did a presentation um, called uh, Growing the Community Through Outreach and Diversity. And he really framed the question of, you know, how can you get people from disadvantaged backgrounds involved in open source? Why is that important for us? We want to grow the community if we're locking out or you know, making it difficult for people from different backgrounds. We're, we're losing the chance to grow in all directions. Um, and yet he's, he co-started OpenHatch and doesn't seem to be really anything about diversity. And as Webchick put it, there are extremely privileged people who still can't grok how the issue queues work. So <laughs> if we can solve the problem for everybody, we make it easier for um, everyone to get involved in open source. So we're really saying, what if the training methods were of a variety? What if there were courses? What if there was informal learning? What if there was self-directed learning? And what if there were a variety of assessment methods so that there was exams for certain people or cer which were appropriate to what skills were being assessed, portfolios or vouched? And what if all this information that was federated where the evidence was easy to find and also validated. So that leads on to you. <laughs> can I, thank you. Can I, uh, can I just say that this is an awesome survey that Heather did. I was, uh, thank you so much for doing that. I think that, that we'll, we'll need to revisit this perhaps many, many more times because there's just so much happening and we 
it's so easy to think there's just one way of doing things, and obviously there's just there are so many different ways. So, so, so thank you. I'm quite, you know, I've seen this before, but I'm uh, seeing it again. I'm even more impressed. So, thank you. Uh, so, I just w I just want to talk about based on all of these issues and all the sort of the great diversity in the Drupal community and 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 in sort of the educational and certification sphere altogether. I just want to talk about some ideas that perhaps we could use to build. Uh, some a an open certification program, open curriculum, and sort of a community-based uh, certification for Drupal. Now, I'm the subtitle here: some generative metaphors. Uh, and generative metaphors are metaphors that you just kind of use a metaphor to shed a light on something, not saying that something is really like something. I just kind of what if, uh, what if we kind of for a while imagine something as something else. So, so I'm not actually making a specific proposal with a set, uh, set parameters. I'm just kind of trying to present a perspective, a different way of looking at things, and hopefully we can, through some discussion, maybe move this, move this forward. So uh, let me just start with, with a brief story. About three years ago, I, I was at a local college, very much like Croydon College, which is not a, in the UK, for those of you who are from abroad, it's not a university, it's just a further education uh, college. I was teaching, I was teaching uh, web design, uh, substituting for somebody, and I was giving a curriculum, and, uh, which was fine, and then uh, some materials with the curriculum. And uh, that was in 2008, and, and they were suggesting that if you want to change a color, you use a font tag and then set the color on there. And that was in 2008. I, I was just appalled. You know, that, that is awful if you want to teach web design. That's wrong. So my initial instinct, because I was involved in the Drupal community, was how can I tell someone, where is the issue queue for this sort of a problem? You know, this is a problem with the curriculum. How do we fix it? How do we release it? And obviously I realized there isn't a way of doing that. This, the, the curriculum is controlled by a commercial enterprise. I'm not sure exactly what their legal state is, but basically they do it for profit. And they, they sell these curricula and, and the certifications to colleges who then run these courses for them. And then uh, they also provide the assessment and, and certification. But it all, you know, they, they do it for, uh, it's, it's kind of a commercial, commercial deal. So my uh, idea based on that was saying, what if we could do curriculum development that is like open source code development? Yeah. So remember, this is a generative metaphor. I'm just saying, let's briefly look at curriculum development and see if if, that, if we can shed some dif a different light on it through that. So how do we generate open source code? I mean, so we all know this is in, in the open source code. It's uh, it's happening in public in Drupal in the Drupal world. We have some maintainers of different parts of the code, whether uh, whether it's modules or now we have these initiatives. Uh, we rely on submissions of patches of bit, little bits of fixes for code or new code from submitters. We have different branches of development uh, that then lead to releases that have different numbers, and then we kind of know what that means. And we also have a, a number of compatibility devices, such as automatic tests uh, or APIs or coding standards, all these other things that we can make sure that the code works together. Now, how is curriculum developed? And uh, this, you know, this incredibly complicated world of curriculum development, basically. It is usually public, so it's not that different because you have to tell somebody what the curriculum is. Even though there are commercial providers who don't, you know, who kind of keep the course and curriculum secret, it has maintainers. But those maintainers are usually some sort of authorities, some people who really don't take any guff from anybody. You know, they just this is how it is. Uh, it is incredibly difficult, as I discovered, to submit updates unless you are one of the people who design, you know, who's nominated by some authority to do the cur curriculum. It is occasionally revised, but as we saw, you know, in 2008, that cur particular web development, web design curriculum was not <laughs> still was using font tags, so it's very inflexible. Uh, but it does, and for compatib compatibility, it does things like it has approved textbooks for that particular curriculum, uh, uh, approved courses that run that curriculum. And, and related materials and also assessments. So as we see that actually we could take, you see these green arrows, we could take the, uh, we could take the, uh, uh, the ideas from the open source code development and actually quite nicely match them onto, the, onto what's happening in code development and per in curriculum development and perhaps make them better by, uh, by putting in some of this openness in. So we could, uh, we could then uh, have a curriculum that is public in uh, completely public, not perhaps only partially public, that has maintainers that would be sort of individuals or small groups who would say, I'm responsible for this branch and make sure that it's always up to date and it's, uh, 
and it, and it works, uh, and they can the, the people can submit patches to make sure that and updates, you know, not patches, but updates that are patch like that fix little bits of it if they become out of date, and uh, it's that the updates are regular and kind of transparent in their regularity, so you know which version of the curriculum you're dealing with, and then actually that the community can then submit compatible and uh, uh, materials, activities, courses, uh, ass assessments, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now the metaphor breaks down a little bit because. Uh, the curriculum isn't exactly like code, so if you, if you, if you actually p design some materials that are not compatible with those particular competencies, that could still mean uh, that you know, th it will still work, but nothing breaks down immediately. So it's kind of, so, so there was, so, so, so there's a bit of a, uh, there's a bit of a sort of a flaw in that metaphor here. But let's imagine that we could sort of, uh, we could just through discussion and, um, and sort of a community involvement dif maintain the compatibility. So what would then the open cur Drupal curriculum look like? Well, it would be some sort of publicly accessible guidelines that would be organized around some competency areas that would kind of uh, cover the different uh, Drupal skills and, you know, and, and profiles, skill profiles perhaps you could say, or skill, skill needs. And each of them would have a maintainer and, uh, and they would have you know, patches and versions that would, that would get regular releases so that people could then you know, go look at, this is the most up-to-date uh, version of sort of a this statement of, no of Drupal skills and knowledge um, and so on. Now, uh, it, and as I mentioned at the beginning, the competency, each of the competencies should also be so defined that it actually defines the compatibility with different types of learning uh, materials. So that so it actually would make clear what you need. The competency would be clear enough so that you could design materials for it that would go to that would kind of help somebody achieve that competency. But it also would make it easy for somebody to certify or sort of assess that somebody actually has achieved that competency. So it's so there's there's a bit of a challenge there, but it can be can be done. And then the training providers, you know, those that already exist would be free to either share their materials and in a way that they share modules and codes that kind of hang off that curriculum. Or they could, if they wanted to, they could just design their own, use that curriculum and design their own secret commercial trainings and, and uh, uh, still work towards that curriculum and then go back and influence the curriculum through curriculum patches. And then a certification provider, again, could use that sort of a curriculum in a way and to, you, and to assess somebody's competence in Drupal and build different profiles because, because this would not be just kind of a one Drupal competence, but uh, you could build different profiles that you can, in the same, you could sort of issue badges for and things like that. And uh, so that way we could have a community-based certification that actually the community could kind of be involved in, in, in more than just in, like in Typo 3 by submitting questions, but actually by helping identify what the knowledge is in, in Drupal that and the skills are and the profiles of, of skills. And it could be distributed because different people could use it in, in different ways, but nevertheless be sort of maintain some compatibility ar around it. And it would be fairly democratic because everybody could contribute back to what this was happening. And then the certification providers could in some way would have to earn the trust of the, of the community or of the, of the of, for instance, for em of employers and so uh, and so on, but it would have to work through some sort of a community system, which could be for informal, like the guilds, or it could be formal, like the bat, like sort of a uh, computer assisted, like the badges. Uh, so basically, in a way, we would have kind of a, a we could have if we adopted a system like the badges, or if we just use the guilds, but we have some sort of a, a, a system of trust where they would have the community could could build in, through the community, we could people could achieve, you know, could uh, maintain. Some sort, some sort of a, uh, some uh, some sort of a, sort of standing regarding the fact re regarding their ability to vouch for somebody's skills. Now, I uh, the, the Mozilla badge system is a very good way of I think going about it because it's using because it's, it's using kind of a combination of the community trust and some you know they have sort of cryptographic signatures and and kind of a based on the model of the web of trust so that you can you can sort of vouch for people in different ways and. Uh, and so on. So I think I think we, if we kind of broaden some of the more metaphors, we could actually build this up into a broader sort of a certification system. Now, how part of the context that we have at the moment, as, as Heather spoke about earlier, is uh, the fact that we already have a bunch of people who provide Drupal training, as we saw also with the raised hands earlier. So why would it? Why would the people who already sell and you know? My apologies if your logo is not on there. We, <laughs> uh, we, 
uh, and uh, but you know there are, there are ma many people out there. So why would these people who are already going to sell training and they they're quite happy with what they're doing? Why would they s go back and sort of to start working on a joint sort of a curriculum project with some sort of an open certification. Well, I think there is a lot of benefit because this would add a, a system where there's an open, there where the education and certification is based on an open community-based curriculum would actually add value to the training providers because they would say, okay, we are helping you to, to achieve this particular competency profile. We, that is, you know, that, that is uh, publicly available. Uh, you could offer a better progression of courses, so you could say, the training providers could say, well, this is where you start, this is where you go. Uh, you could, they could consult with corporations to help them, uh, to help them sort of create mix, profile mix, or skills mix for their, for their staff. And they could also, if the curriculum were well designed, it would be much easier to, to create new materials because the well-designed curriculum makes it much, makes it very easy to come to, to put together a syllabus with core, with sort of, uh, with different learning and teaching activities and also supporting uh, materials. And also, uh, obviously, uh, the, you know, the, the fact that you can, the certification would be more, some sort of community-based certification would be sort of more broadly recognized, would work together. So, and obviously the last benefit is the same as with code. You know, you contribute code and you learn, you get free code review, you learn from others, you, you have the benefit of working with others. So, how would be this? How would this be? How, why would this be good for people who are coming who are new to Drupal? The sort of the new dev the hidden developers, the people who are, we don't necessarily see on the forums or in the issue queues. Well, it would be easier to get in into Drupal. It would be easier to create a uh, a learning program for self study. So somebody could say, okay, I want to learn Drupal. These are some of the steps I can do. I can take you know f some informal learning, some so some learning uh, through training and and so on. Okay. And uh, it would make it, it would actually also provide maybe alternative route to, to, to Drupal competence rather than perhaps the certified to rock system kind of uh, in a way catch, tries to capture that informal learning, but actually this could be, uh, this, uh, this could be a, a bit more, give, give people a few bit more guidance on how to get somewhere. And obviously it would be easier if you have a, a skills profile that works this way, that's certified by other trusted community members, it would be easier to advertise your services and, or to get, get a job. How would this be good for the Drupal community? Well, it would be it would be good because new members would be it would be easier for many new members to come into the community, and uh, and also it would be one more way of assigning trust, which is inc becoming increasingly difficult uh, with the with the size of the community. So just to do it based on who you know, who you you know, who you remember talking to or seeing on the forum. And how is this good for the clients? Well, it's again, this oh, no, my apologies. Um, it is <laughs> this is good for the clients that it's much easier to hire, hire employees and uh, and to get contractors for the right jobs and also it would be easier for them to create development plans for their for their Drupal staff so they could you know, so they wouldn't necessarily just have to hire a Drupal developer they could they could get a particular staff profile so So um, after you've listened to some of these ideas, we're really curious to hear, and we've been watching on the Etherpad there, do feel free to jump in. Uh, you know, is this pie in the sky? Um, do you think that what we're talking about is, is completely bonkers? Or do you sort of wonder how this could actually happen and would you like to join us in, in thinking about this? We'd like to go into a little bit of a discussion, um, a practical discussion you could participate in, and how would this API actually work? And maybe a critical discussion, what are you know, SWAT? I know you probably love SWAT's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, we were planning on a little bit more time for small group discussion. I'm just looking at the time here. It is five, it's like four minutes to three. We have 15 minutes. Yeah, we sort of do have 15 minutes. Um, and should we break and just take general questions? Well, let's 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 have a vote. So, who would like? We were thinking maybe just guys, you know, break into groups and discuss it, and maybe make some notes on the Etherpad, or we could just take general questions. So, who would like to do the small group thing? If you raise your hand, nobody. So, general discussion it is. Okay, so that that's <laughs> Here we go. talking about democracy. Let me just go back to the pie in the sky. So, I just want to say this could this is this would be a lot of work. This is a this is a lot of lot of stuff going on. You know, I think it, it could work, but it could easily just not work. And, but we've seen that the other efforts at certification and Drupal training haven't actually particularly been successful so far. And I think one of the reasons is because of the diversity and complexity of the Drupal knowledge in the Drupal community. And so perhaps, uh, and also because of the very strong feelings in Drupal community about the, 
everybody's ability to contribute and to, to have a voice. So, you know, so giving people a voice, particularly at least at the curriculum stage, um, and, and also, also sort of harnessing the existing models of kind of trust communication in the Drupal community could be quite, could be quite powerful if we can find a way to actually just take those, those metaphors and those, those suggestions and maybe make them into something specific. Um, we have uh, we have a variety of different training partners. They could be development shops or their companies based focally, fo mainly on training, and their clients are all asking about certification. Our partners are asking about certification um, who are development shops and not training. Uh, there have been situations, for example, where say um, a French development shop cannot get cannot get a government uh, contract because when the question is, are you certified in X software, they can't tick yes. And that blocks uh, Drupal as well from getting into these other areas. So yes, there are situations where certification is specifically required. There could also be staff who participate in training and they need to provide to their employer some type of certifi you know, certification or certificate. And so, um, you know, whether that's something more like the Lullabop model is, you know, you participated, here's your certificate of participation, um, or whether or not employers need to trust that skill, we're hearing it time and time again. Um, and of course, Dries himself feels like uh, it could be something that could really help the community. Um, I don't know, does anyone else have any sort of experience with demand for certification? Um, yeah. Um, I didn't get your name there, Ayla. So, uh, Karen, if you put your name is up there as well, that's maybe something good to show. The answer to that was, um, you know, 11 weeks uh, course, someone participates and they don't want to complete it and not get something to show for it afterwards. Any other responses to that? Or Eric from Wislearn? So certification, Eric Wizlern is saying that a certification of attendance is, or certificate of attendance is usually enough to accommodate most cases. Is anyone else saying that as well? Or Kate Miller, chapter three? So the examples given there about a government agencies requiring some, again, a type of uh, certificate of attendance being adequate. Uh, uh, yeah. Does anyone have any other alternative reasons? Uh, Rod just said he's he's a again agreeing Rod from OS training. Does anyone have any alternative things? Or why? Who else is demanding training? Um, are we all really concerned only about these government agencies and completing an SOW? Finn Luz has given an example of a type of accreditation system where someone is a, has the a, ability to be an authority and accredit, a, accredit uh, certifications. Yoan, you wanted to add something more to your comment earlier? Really? Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I just, uh, oh, Peter, sorry, do you have?
Well, can I, can I, yeah, can I basically, I'm saying that, and if, if you go back to the title of this, the, the real title of this session, how do you know this gal knows Drupal? And that's really the essential problem. And in a way, you know, I started with the Drupal community in 2006, and I pretty much knew the, you know, I mean, it was so easy to know, somebody knows, because you looked at their Drupal.org profile, or you've met them probably, but you know, at the, at the early stages. So the community was small enough that you could actually kind of have you know, know enough about who's, you know, who you can trust. And, but now the community is too large, so we actually we don't know. So the certification, even though we talked about the reasons, you know, government contracts, employers, and everything, but it actually is could, could be as simple as, you know, you meet someone, and how, you know, so it would be so nice if you could go on Drupal.org and look at, their, uh, look at their profile and see those bunch of badges that they've collected based on the work they've done. You know, so again, we didn't have time to go into any, sp because any of those slides that I showed could be a separate session on how you could do it, how, you know, how that would work and how it wouldn't. But there could be so many ways that, that a system like this could not just w help the, the training community or the training environment, it could actually help everybody in the community because you could look at people's profile and say, okay, I know what this person is about. Because at the moment, just I did modules and I, it's just not enough what's on the Drupal.org profile. And I think because it's, uh, it's just so hard to get a glimpse, you know, to kind of capture people's skills and competence. It, it is if you have if you can sort of establish those sorts of trust. So you could say badges, certificates from uh, I don't know somebody, company X are good. You know, so we could because the badges could uh, you could you could implement some sort of a feedback mechanism as well. So I think you you could do it, but it would just you know but, but it, it, you yeah it is it is yeah sorry. The problem with the, the Red Hat model is that Red Hat is pretty much is a kind of a bounded system. There's only so you know like the Linux is there's only so many things you do with it. Whereas even though it's it's a lot, but it's still whereas the Drupal you know as Peter was saying, there are just so many different ways you can approach a problem that are right, and then there are just so many different kind of skills profiles. So it's difficult to difficult to implement just like a single exam type, which is if you notice type 03 for instance are very constricted as to what they actually certify. They don't certify you can you can you know develop for it. Yeah, and what was your name again? Alex. Alex from anywhere? New Zealand. He's Alex from New Zealand. Okay. Um, there is actually a module where if you have it in if you have this module installed, name escapes me, level ten developed it and it will come they actually have a one site that does aggregations like tutor.com, T U T R dot com and aggregates information all tagged and then apparently it will just suggest learning materials screencasts, et cetera, based on the modules that you have installed. So there may be paths to that already. Diana from Four Kittens in the back.
what time is your session on that? Last thing on Wednesday, pimping the session, very good. Plugging the session, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Too inappropriate. I just wanted to say, I think that that will be a really great session to go to, um, and I see a few other hands we will get to. But one thing I think we you know, started off talking about these clients and the demand and stuff. We're not thinking about that individual, that person who comes to the community. And there's this really interesting tweet that came on from, I, don't, I actually don't know where the fellow was from. And he was like, you know, like, I don't even know where to get started. I don't even, I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. And if we had that structure there, um, someone who's self-directed would be able to see, okay, I can, you know, I can follow some free Node 1 materials. I can buy this book. I'll be able to learn about it there. And if I want to get up that curve, if I want to go up and do these really hard challenges, I can see what it's going to take to get me there. There's actually, um, on Drupal.org, there's the something called the Developer Profiles. They've been published uh, two weeks ago. There's not a lot of response on them at, at the moment. I'll share the links in, in a moment. Um, and they are actually two profiles, one of a, say, a front-end developer, one of a sort of back-end developer. We have a, actually through the curriculum and training group last summer developed about five or six different roles. We really need to flesh out these roles. And it's not the skills that they, ne that they need now, it's the skills they need coming before. So I whether it's, you know, you need to know PHP and CSS if you're going to do this role, and you need to understand or have some experience with, you know, some type of data migration or something like that if you're going to get this particular role. And that's sort of what I think um, Dominic showed. There's just this gigantic breadth of information if you're going to get up to that level. So I saw a few hands. Donna Benjamin Kim, oh yeah, also from New Zealand. Sorry, no. Australia, sorry. <laughs> That gets that seems a little messy territory of like what's curriculum and what's materials and yeah. I'll let uh, Dominic take that part. Yeah, uh, well, I'm the, I was just I mean, CVC CRM is kind of a good example because they have a there's the floss manuals and they have a kind of an open source manuals and actually they have a uh, documentation sprint this week going on. Uh, so you know, so 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 those on the materials definitely, but I definitely I, I'm, but also hearing the idea of having some sort of a common you know, common tree on which you could hang these things, and uh, and that could help you develop, and perhaps not waste the effort of redevelop, reinventing, reinventing the wheel. And I, I mean, again, and the metaphor of the of the code, I think, is important because sometimes there are two modules that do pretty much the same thing, but they're written because you know the author just didn't quite like the way it was done the first time. Well, this is the same thing. We, you know, if it's like code, you can be forked. So you could say, well, I this branch doesn't. I don't think this is how the skills are. So I'm just going to fork it and offer an alternative. And again, if if the sort of attendant certification system is based on uh, is based on some sort of a level of trust, kind of machine assisted trust, then you could then people could sort of certify. Yes, this person knows you know this kind of curriculum, that curriculum. But they, they could, you could still link it to some sort of a profile of, of ability. And then, you know, I think there would be a, a sort of a business in, in the sorts of consultancies that are happening all, over the, all, all the time about who do you need to hire? Well, then you could say you need uh, three people with this profile and three people with this profile. And then those people, you know, and then you could just kind of look in the community who has those, you know, badges or whatever sort of certifications of trust. We have two minutes left, so oh, one sorry. last question. <laughs> I think we go back to, if you saw Dries's, uh 
a keynote today, he mentions this, um, you know, the sort of like the intake for Drupal. You know, our intake pipe is clogged right now. We can't bring hobbyists in up to speed if people aren't able to say, you know, I was speaking with a developer who uses Python in the daytime and in his free time he uses PHP because he likes the way it looks. He likes PHP and so he's here. It's his first DrupalCon. He's never actually even used Drupal before and um, he has a lucky opportunity to come here because he's nearby. Now, that person doesn't even know where to start. He was able to, you know, you know, come here. What about all the people who don't have the opportunity to come here? We really have to think about, yeah, what, who, who is this for? And I think that if it's a community-based certification, we're talking about something that's open and available. It could be a much different landscape for that, you know, to widen that intake pipe. One last ja Jacob thing there. Well, it's the same way as code, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's you develop in Drupal. I mean, if you ask somebody 15 years ago, is it possible to develop something like Drupal in the way that Drupal actually has been developed? They would have said, no, you're crazy. That's just not possible. And it turned out it was. So, you know, so maybe, maybe I don't know. You know I, d I cannot say they will, but I'd say w it could be possible to try. But what I was trying to just, just kind of a, to, co to conclude and come back to what you were saying, who benefits? Well, the community benefits is that, is that also everybody, the, Well, well, both because you need to because it's because you're go, you're learning. I mean, you come on Drupal.org and you take a first step, your second step. You're doing all these things to learn more about Drupal. Well, this way, you could there could be a system that you could get credit for it, and you could actually leave a trace through your learning, and that would help you communicate with other people who will then see your trace. They will say, okay, this person has done all of these things. No, it's just uh, one second. I want to pull this back to the the. Um, De definitions, we're talking about a competency that we're sharing, you know, we're actually patching, you know, can install Drupal 6 and can, you know, install and, val you know, configure X module. We're not talking about the screencast or the exercise or the activity that actually goes through step by step, this is how you do it. It's simply a, a quantifiable, accessible competency. So um, we're not talking about, you know, sharing all of your great you know, proprietary commercial materials, that's not it. You know, but there are so many great free resources out there as well. And if those were, if those were tagged and easily accessible, then the value of an aggregator like tutor.com or there's one like DrupalCamp27.org right now, um, the value of those would be increased greatly because you wouldn't just be swimming in this, you know, get this Google-itis where you're just swimming in all this material and you don't know where to start and thrown up with this, you know, just vomit of stuff that's spam ridden and, hacked and horrible, I mean, you'd be able to see, oh wait, this is, this is relevant to my needs right now. So just keep that person in mind. Uh, I think it changes things. It, does anyone want to continue this conversation? We're really pressing our luck running into the coffee break now. And and who thinks this isn't pie in the sky and wants to talk about it further? Okay, the there's a show about two or three hands. Excellent. So let's go meet your coffee so <laughs> and then go to the we have the, bo we have the buff coming right after this. So, so, so just, you know, we'll just have a coffee and then meet in room... Uh, room three... 32 in the Croydon College for half an hour, half an hour <laughs> after this. <laughs> after the coffee.